Hello today, I'm going to be unboxing and giving you a first look at the new MSI X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi, which is going to be compatible with AMD's 7000, 8000 and 9000 processors. So let's go ahead and get the motherboard unboxed and take a closer look at it. So this is everything that comes in the box with our motherboard. So we've got some paperwork including a quick start guide. We've got some stickers and we've got an MSI shout out card. We've got the antenna for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. We've got two SATA data cables. One's got a straight connector, one's got a right angle connector. We've got an extension for our front panel connectors. We've got a one to three easy con cable. We've got an easy M.2 clip remover, an M.2 plate screw and a USB drive. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, I'm working along the bottom from left to right. First of all, we've got our HD audio connector, followed by a 12 volt 4 pin non addressable RGB connector, and next to that, we've got a 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector. Next to that, we've got a chassis intrusion header, followed by a system fan header. We've then got an 8 pin supplemental PCIe power connector. Plugging a PCIe cable from your power supply into this connector is completely optional, but what it does do is provide additional power to your PCIe slots, making sure even the most power hungry next gen graphics cards don't run out of power even during power excursions. Next to this, we've got two USB 2.0 headers, followed by another three system fan headers. We've then got another 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector followed by a safe boot jumper, which will load the default BIOS setting and apply the lowest PCIe mode for a safe boot. Then finally, at the bottom right of the motherboard, we've got our system panel header where you're gonna plug in your front panel connectors. Just above this, we've got speaker and clear CMOS jumpers. Working up the right-hand side of the motherboard, first of all, we've got two right-angled USB 5 gigabit per second Type-A ports. We've then got four SATA ports, followed by a right-angled USB Type-C 20 gigabit per second port. This port will also support up to 27 watt PD fast charging. Just above this, we've got an EasyCon header V2, which you'll find useful if you're going to be using certain MSI fans and liquid coolers. Alternatively, you can use the 1 to 3 EasyCon cable, allowing you to plug in an ARGB, PWM, and USB 2.0 device. Above this, we've got our 24 pin power connector, followed by a postcode status screen with our debug LEDs just above it. And you'll find these both particularly useful if you need to troubleshoot your PC. Above these, we've got our motherboard's third and final 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector, followed by another system fan header. Working along the top of the motherboard, first of all, we've got our motherboard's sixth and final system fan header, followed by our pump and CPU fan headers. And at the top left of the motherboard, we've got two 8 pin EPS power connectors to provide additional power to your CPU. The motherboard features an 8-layer PCB and has a 14 plus 2 plus 1 duet rail power system with large aluminium heat sinks over the VRM. In the middle of the motherboard, we've got our AM5 socket and standard mounting brackets. We've got four RAM slots and the motherboard will accommodate up to a maximum of 256 gigabytes of DDR5 at up to 8400 plus megatransfers per second overclocked. We've got a large extended heatsink with the MSI Arsenal Gaming logo over our X870E chipset for improved cooling. The motherboard features 3x16 size PCIe slots and it's good to see that our top slot is reinforced with MSI steel armor. The top slot also features an easy PCIe release button. It's just one press of the button to open the slot and another press of the button to lock the slot. This top slot is our Gen 5 slot. It will run in by 16 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. The PCI aliens for the lower two slots come from the chipset. The middle slot is a Gen 3 slot and it will run in by one mode, while the bottom slot is a Gen 4 slot and it will run in by four mode. We've got four M.2 slots on the motherboard. There's one behind the top and bottom heatsink which can be removed toolessly, and we've got two behind the middle heatsink which is held on with four screws. The top two slots are Gen 5 slots and they will run in by 4 mode with the PCI lanes coming from the CPU. While the bottom two slots are Gen 4 slots and they will run in by 4 mode with the PCI lanes coming from the chipset. No matter which of the slots you install your M.2 SSD in, the process for securing the drive is toolless. Take a look at our rear I.O. First of all, we've got a BIOS flashback and clear CMOS buttons and then we've got HDMI 2.1 port. We've got three USB Type-C ports. The top two are USB 4 ports supporting speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second and display port out. While our lower USB Type-C port is a 10 gigabit per second port. 
We've got nine USB Type A ports. The two red ports will support speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. And to the top red port, you're going to want to plug your USB drive into if you want to flash your BIOS. The three blue ports are five gigabit per second ports, while the four black ports are USB 2.0 ports. In terms of networking, we've got a five gigabit per second Ethernet port, and we've got the antenna points for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. At the bottom of the motherboard, we've got our audio connectors, which consists of spit -of out mic in, and line out. And the motherboard uses the ALC4080 codec and supports 7.1 channel HD audio. So don't confuse this motherboard with the older X870 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. This is a brand new release from MSI and because it uses the X870E chipset, this motherboard is going to have more PCI lanes available for it. And this is why this motherboard has been able to take a no compromise approach and include all the features you're going to want for a premium build. So the motherboard has just gone on sale and in the UK it will set you back just under £330. And when we look at all the premium features this motherboard includes, that seems like pretty good value for money to me. The only thing I'm not completely sold on just yet is the military green and black colour theme, but we'll get the motherboard into a build on the channel fairly soon and we'll see how it works. If you have enjoyed this unboxing overview, please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.